<laughs> hey, welcome back to Bible and Blues. Today it looks like I have a ray of light right here. Bad lighting day, what can I say? Uh, so we're doing Dirk Gently, Season 2, Episode 1 of Season 2. This is awesome. I love it. And, uh, you know, I have, I, you know, so let's just jump right into it. So, um, so the show opens up. It's in a fantasy land of some kind, okay? Uh, and, you know, these guys, this guy is being chased, and this guy is the, your dashing hero, and he has pink hair, okay? Um, so, you know, it, it's a weird little little land where everybody is carrying, instead of swords, they're carrying oversized scissors. They're like, you know, two and a half foot long set of, set of you know, sewing shears, uh, which was kind of funny, I thought. Uh, and then they go into a, it's a fighting with them, and so um, okay, you know why not, right? Yeah, you know, the, the the it was a fantasy land kind of thing, and then of course, of course, because it's the BBC and it's 2017, uh, the guy with pink hair turns out to be the hero of the fantasy land and also gay. Uh, so okay, yeah, why not? Who cares? Uh, so he's being told, uh, you know, he that he's as he's that he needs to find uh, Dirk gently to save their land, uh, to save their realm. So there you have it. He has to go, and then boom, he's, I'll be honest, he's out of the show for the rest of this episode. But that was the opening for ep for episode, episode one, season two, episode one. So, uh, so you know, then we you know, do a little bit back and forth because uh, people will come together some more later on. They'll come together more. Um so Dirk is at the at Blackwing, okay. Blackwing is uh, you know the, the place where he where he was kept, studied, trained, whatever it was uh, previously, and you know the the old guard is now gone. Now the new guy is there, and I can't quite I can't remember the guy's name, but yeah, uh, so I'm sorry. I'll uh, I'll get his name for the next episode. Uh, you know he's, he's kind of he's a he's kind of dumb. He's in overs above his mentality in this whole thing. Uh, just look, I think it's just somebody that they feel like they can control, and so they put him in charge of the, in charge of the uh, the, the program. Um, but Dirk's there, and he's being tested in all kinds of ways, looking for uh, you know some sort of psychological ability, some sort of ESP, premonition, cl you know, clairvoyance, precognition. And none of it's working. And he's like, you know what? We've been through all this before. I've dealt with this already. This isn't how it works. Okay. So then we squish over to Todd and Farah. Now, Todd and Farah, for the past, you know, while Dirk's been in here, Dirk's been in here for a couple of months. Okay. Um, so while he's been in here, Todd and Farah ha have been looking for him and trying to find him. And Todd now has, now, now if you remember from, from last season, he had been lying about having the same disease as his sister. And then, boom, he comes down with it. Bad luck for him, right? So now he's dealing with that, just so you know. He's, 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 he has that paraticulitis or whatever it was. I can't remember the name of it. Um, so they, they have, you know, he's doing this whole, they're in the car, they're talking, and I, I think she's tired of it. I mean, really, they've been doing this for two months, and he's just like, the next thing is going to be it, you know? And she's like, well, you've been saying the next thing for two months. So, okay, then we go on to his sister, Amanda. And remember, Amanda had been, uh, had hooked up with the Rowdy Three. Uh, and, you know, they had the ability to actually stop her, 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 crazy visions uh by essentially sucking up the emotional content involved and they loved it and she loved it because that means that she's not having uh these attacks anymore uh she loves it so she's really loyal to these guys and these guys are like these are real they're really loyal to her they love her um so and she's but she's only with one left the other two were picked up by blackwing by the new blackwing group and so uh you know so she's by herself with this one guy, and that's it. So, okay. And she's using her visions and hoping to get uh, you know, an idea of where to go to find the other two guys so the, the Rowdy Three can be together with her again. So Rowdy Three plus one. So uh, Todd and Farah, back, you know, going over to Todd and Farah, 
uh, you know, she's meeting with her brother, who actually is a CIA guy. Uh, you know, and apparently they've been using his login information, his kind of stuff, in order to figure out where they're at, where they need to go next and go here, go there. Uh, you know, just trying to and so, so he, he kind of caught on to it. Um, so Farrah meets with her brother. They go to this little town called Bergsburg. Uh, Bergsburg is going to become a central part of this of, of this season. Uh, not too sure how. I do know, uh, you know a little bit here and there, but I'm not too sure how, how in-depth it's going to be. But it seems like Bergsburg, okay, uh, what a ridiculous name, right, uh, is, is going to be, um, you know, where all this is happening. So uh, so Todd, you know, Farrah goes to meet her, meet her brother in a field and uh, by this uh, boat that's in the middle, middle of the field. And, uh, and a cop pulls up. Uh, Todd, of course, freaks out because they're on the run. And, you know, but, and, you know, but the cop is kind of, you know, uh, you know, a Barney Fife kind of guy. Okay. He's kind of Barney Fife-ish. And, and so, you know, you know, Todd has an attack during this, this whole scenario. All of a sudden, and, and, you know, the cop doesn't know what to do. The sheriff, he's a sheriff and, and he begins his hallucination. The sheriff has no idea what to do. But uh, Farrah comes, you know, saves Todd, but, uh, you know, gets him up and says, no, we're getting out of here. It's okay. We're fine. And, you know, the sheriff, the, the sheriff is all freaking out because, you know, he didn't know what to do, do for him. Uh, but, uh, but they leave this, his uh, prescription bottle there. So now there's a prescription bottle with his name on it. So that's not a good thing. Um, so we have, then, then we move on. We have a new character. Uh, her name is Susie. Uh, Susie has a... Uh, pretty bad life i'll be honest uh she's she she you know her her son's a little jerk uh, he's a teenager at about 17 years old uh he's pissed at her that she that instead of buying uh tickets to a concert for him she uh he she bought groceries instead and you know she had to make a choice you know how it goes and you know so uh and you know you know then she's in her and her husband her husband's uh you know just, you know, basic, basic 40 year old slob, kind of like me. Um, so, you know, so yeah, she has a little confrontation with her son, takes his phone, you know, and, um, uh, then, you know, next thing, next thing we see is she's driving her husband, her and her husband are driving to, um, to work. She's going to drop her husband off and go on to her job, uh, in her really crappy PT cruiser. Not the PT cruisers are bad cars, but this is a crappy car. So she drops her son, off, her, her her husband off. She continues to drive on her way to her job, and she pa she happens to pass by Bart, the holistic assassin, uh, who's riding a bicycle on, along the road. So you know, and they they they're going opposite directions. So something's not going to make sense later about that. So uh, you know, she gets to her job, and her job's at a mine, um, and uh, you know she she's secretary or or assistant to the manager of the mine. This guy's name is Dan, and he's a jerk. So she's got, uh, you know, a, flas a fast slob husband who, who you know, kind of miserable guy, doesn't do anything. Uh, she has a, a teenage son that's just, you know, a jerk. Uh, she, has a, she has a bad job with a bad boss uh, driving a bad car. She's got a lot of strikes against, you know, saying that she has, you know, that, you know, now when she's not made out to have a great life. Okay, so um, anyway, so then we move on. But we get back over to Blackwing for just a second because uh, Ken, the guy, the guy who was with Bart for all almost all of last season, uh, he Blackwing has Ken. Okay, and you know they they're trying to figure him out. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, you were with you know the host, the, the assassin person for seven days, and she didn't kill you. So what's your power? Well, remember, it's the dumb guy you know uh, that's in charge now. So. Uh, but they they have him in a taxi cab. So it's pretty funny. He's in a taxi cab, and he's you know like a five point harness and a, and a padlock on, so he can't get out. So he's stuck in there, and they have him. They have an IV drip hooked up to him. I don't know if it's keeping him sedated or what. But and there's a couple of machine guns trained on on him there, and he's in a he's in a taxi. I don't get it. So maybe that'll make more sense later. 
Uh, and the dog that remember from the very first episode, the dog that was so crucial in the first season is now with him. And they're trying to figure out the dog too. It's, uh, so what they're trying to do, and we kind of get a little idea of what happened with Blackwing. Blackwing used to be, of course, this place that had all these, um, you know, misfit paranormal type people. And, uh, and it, it grew and, and then it kind of fell apart. And they're trying to bring it back, uh, but uh, they can't find. Which he's like, you know, the, the 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 guy in charge, the agents is trying to find the cool ones, and he's like, nobody's cool anymore. It's, 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 you know, the coolest person they have just lays there. Um, so Ken's like, you know what, you know, none of these people need to be locked up. That's the problem. They need to be out there. So, you know, he takes, you know, the dumb guy takes it to uh, uh, mean. He, that they need to be out uh, and exposed to each other, and um, and so you know he tries that. Doesn't of course, you know, I'm sure that's not going to work. So we go back to Dirk. Dirk has this really wacky dream, which was actually kind of cool, uh, where where uh, Todd and Pharaoh show up and 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 you know we're uh, you know all dressed in black and you know talking about uh, they got their they got in there because of a stone that Thor gave them. Uh, that's supposed to be like an Infinity Stone, I assume. And, you know, turns out it's just a dream. Okay, he's just dreaming about getting out. Um, but uh, then they, you know, they put they put Dirk in with a, with a comatose guy. And, you know, Dirk's uh, wondering, you know, what's what's going on with this? Uh, you know, what's what happened to him? Because he used to, apparently he never really did talk much. Uh, but, uh, you know, so he talks to the guys like an old friend kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, nothing comes of that right there. Uh, so Susie, uh, we're back to Susie, uh, at the mine and, uh, in walks this, uh, guy, I'm going to call him mafia guy at this point in time. I think there's more to him than that. Uh, but at this point in time, we're going to call him mafia guy. Mafia guy shows up, uh, uh, to, and, 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 you know, says, where's your master? It's like, who's in charge? So, you know, you know, and so, uh, Susie, you know, gets Dan out there and apparently Dan recognizes the guy. Uh, and and tries to threaten him away because you know this uh, you know, he made some sort of deals and it turns out it's with the criminal element and uh, he's like you know so he tries to get re- tries to get rid of the guy uh, through intimidation and the guy's like oh okay then he turns on wait a second or else what you know and uh, Dan's and <laughs> then uh, the other the, the the guy borrows Susie's pen. And stabs Dan with it and kills him with a with a with, with a pencil. Okay, uh, so the you know the pen is mightier than the sword. Hmm. So kind of it was almost uh, it was it was not as good as uh, Born Identity version uh, of a, of a pen fight, but still it was it was still pretty good. So of course Susie freaked it was freaking out over it. She's uh, you know not doesn't know what to do about that right there. So. Okay, so Todd and Farrah, we're halfway through this. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Todd and Farrah, you know, gets themselves to a, to a gated government facility kind of thing. And it's, uh, uh, they go in, and there's a house in the middle of it. And the house is all padlocked shut, so, you, so they couldn't get in. Uh, but they, you know, but there's this whole, you know... Uh, uh, they have a moment, Todd, uh, Todd and Farrah do, um, at, at, at one point in time in this. Uh, it's kind of set up for them. Um, but he's really focused. This is, this is it. This is, the, this is the next step. This is the clue. We are that close. And she's like, you know, your fingers are a long ways apart. So anyway. Uh, so back over to the Bergsburg Sheriff, uh, who uh, had Todd's uh, prescription bottle. He used that to find out who Todd was. Uh, shows links uh, of FBI's most wanted of uh, Todd, Amanda, and Farah, all three of them. Um, so this isn't good. Uh, now this is a very very boring town. His deputy, Deputy Tina, uh, comes <laughs> comes in during this this scene, and she's drunk. Okay, so. Apparently, absolutely nothing happens in this county. So, okay. So anyway, so Todd and Farrah back over to them. They're chasing a rabbit. Why are they chasing a rabbit? I don't know. Because Todd's looking. Todd's looking for absolutely anything that might, you know, give the you know give them that uh, that that focus, that possibility, that that next thing. Okay. So he starts chasing this rabbit. 
chases it all over the place. Oh, I got it. Nope, no, I don't. It's, it looked as ridiculous as it sounded. Uh, so kind of go back to Susie. Susie's freaking out uh, still, and it's and it's 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 nightfall now. Okay, she she apparently stuck around. She you know for till nightfall. Um, and the cleanup crew showed up. The people that are coming to get take care of Dan uh, that uh, was killed, and. They grab her, they take her outside, and they have special orders to do something. Uh, and they have, and, and you know, their thinking is, is this is going to just kill her. Um, but there's a spell book, and there's a magic wand with a, with a, what looks like a, you know, plastic, you know, toy wand crystal thing on top. Uh, so, um, as they're getting, so, and so there's in that, you know, he tries to say the words, doesn't say them right, nothing happens. Uh, and so they're getting ready to go ahead and just, yeah, just shoot her. Make it easy, right? Uh, well, lo and behold, Bart shows up. Remember I told you it was kind of weird. Uh, you know, Susie was going this way, Bart was going the other way. So how did Bart end up over there? Who knows? Maybe the universe told her to turn around, you know? So Bart comes in and kills off all the cleanup guys, gets down to Susie, and decides not to kill her because I don't know. She's sick, like, you know. Even though I feel like I should, I'm not going to do it. And yada yada yada. Um, and so, would you like to be my friend? And Susie's like, no. And so, uh, Bart's like starts uh, starts freaking out a little bit. And Susie uh, freaks out. It's like you know, she just kind of you know had it and nervous breakdown time. As she's freaking out, she reaches her hand back, and the wand goes flying into her hand. She holds it, and it's almost like speaking into a microphone. She says something, and you know, weird ge you know, geometric uh, shapes and stuff fly out of it and knock Bart out. Um, kind of weird. All right, so, uh, so you know, so she grabs the spell book and heads, ba heads back to her, back to home. Um, so let me go back to Todd and Farrah. Uh, Todd still wants, is trying, wants to catch this rabbit. And Farrah catches up with him. Apparently, she spent the past, what, five, six hours chasing after him in this field as he's trying to find this rabbit. He is convinced this rabbit is the issue. Uh, so they have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about things. About how, you know, this, you know, it, she's, 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 at, she's done. She's so tired. She, there's, there's, they made no headway through this whole process uh, you know, for the past two months. And he's like, you know, hey, come on, you know, I mean, you're not the only one that lost everything here. He lost his job, he lost his, you know, his sister, and all, the, da, 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 all, all the horrible things that happened. Uh, but he saw something else in the, in the first episode, in the first, sorry, first season, that really uh, affected him and, you know, that he's a, he's a true believer, essentially, now. Um, so all of a sudden, as they're talking... You know, Farrah's like, you know, well, there's, there's, there's just no way it could be anything else. I mean, is it, we're, uh, she's, she's done, right? All of a sudden, from out of a tree, a car just drops. An old, rusted car drops out of the tree, tail end first, and just stops. <laughs> it, was, it was obviously computer graphic. Uh, but stop, you know, drops and stops. Doesn't fall over, doesn't tip, doesn't do anything like that. And, you know, the color just went kind of weird, so I'm sure it's, it's going to have an effect. Uh, so... You know, then um, uh, so that so that that was kind of you know okay, something weird just happened. So that's kind of the thing that they're always looking for something weird, something different. Um, so then we kind of go through a little series of things. Uh, we're we're going through uh, the uh, the killer uh, go, actually goes to this house. The guy you know the guy who killed Dan and you know, and everything. He goes to this house and walks up to it, and the door is busted wide open. So I, I would say that uh, before he got there, uh, more there's more story going. It's going to happen from before he got there. So, but the door is busted open, and he walks in, and then you know he fades out. Uh, then we go over to uh, there's a little flash of Amanda. She's driving with that one remaining, uh, you know, uh, rowdy three guy. Uh, so there's a little. Then um, something something unique happens, and it deals with uh, now the 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 dumb agent. He had a the stress ball thing. You squeeze it and thing, you know, and he he worked the heck out of that thing. Um, so, but then all you know, you know, he's sitting at the desk. He's watching the camera. He's watching Dirk gently sleep. How boring is that? Um, 
And then he you know, gets tired, he gets up, walks away, leaves that little toy thing on the desk. Uh, that toy thing starts to do, uh, it starts to turn, falls onto the floor as transforms. And now it actually transforms into a series of things as it goes from place to place. At one point it was, it started out a mouse, turned into a piece of paper to get underneath, underneath the door, uh, turn into another thing, turn, oh, what the heck was it? I can't remember what it was. Well, turn into a person to walk by a person right after walking by the person, turn into a bubble to be able to get to, through events, turned into a remote control car to travel through the ducting, uh, got to got to Dirk Gently's room, turned into a bug to get back into his room, transforms into this weird, weird alien-like girl with glowing green eyes. And Dirk looks at her like, what are you doing here? Apparently he knows her. I don't know where he knows her from, but he knows her from somewhere. So he responded to her as, I know you, what are you doing here? So, you know... And she and she bends over, looks at him, and says, "You have to find the boy." Splashes him with a cup of water. He disappears. She disappears. Nothing left but the bed, and the cup of water and the empty cup cup on the floor. And that was pretty much the end of the episode. Uh, if you saw the, uh, the the scenes for for next week, you have some insight of of what, of what else is going on. Um, looking forward to it. Uh, tell me, did you watch it? Uh, did you watch it and enjoy it? Was it a fun, fun episode? What did you think about it? Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, of course, you know, you, you had to expect that there was going to be some sort of, uh, some sort of a gay person in there eventually. It's a BBC show, you know, and it's 2017. TV can't do anything without, without doing that. So there you go. Whatever. Uh, so... Uh, but then there's also, there's also so much else going on. What do you think of Susie? Do you think, uh, what do you think of her as a, uh, as a new character? Um, what do you think of this whole magic wand thing going on? Uh, this, uh, spell book that's, ha that's, that's happening. I don't know what's going on with that. That's, that's kind of unique stuff. So anyway, uh, so that was, uh, that was episode one of season two. Uh, tell me in the comments what you thought. Did you enjoy it? Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, you know, uh, this is the time of year where I do an awful lot of these things. I'm actually episodes behind in different things. So I really need to get good pushing on a bunch of stuff. So be sure to check it out. God bless. I'm out of here.